What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory to kick things off. We are playing against a huge gorilla, one of the best, if not the best player in FIFA uh, right now. He's up there with, uh, you know, hashtag Harry, hashtag Tass, um, Bruce Granick. There's, there's a whole bunch of like really good pros. No offense to those that I may have uh, missed out there. It's just those that are popping to my mind right now. It's obviously a load of uh, pros in right now. And um, this, was, uh, this game was recorded on Friday. David Myler, the whole City football player who's uh, big in the FIFA and Ultimate Team scene, streams a lot himself. Set up a tournament between uh, a few of uh, a few pros and a few YouTubers. Myself, Bates, and Marshall Atani were involved. David Myler himself, uh, Poacher, Hashtag Tass, and Epsilon Gorilla were all involved in the tournament. And I got drawn in the first round against Gorilla. And these are the games. It was the best of three. Um, so obviously, you know, he, he's he's a different class of player. Like compared to me, I've 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 beaten a pro here or there before. You know, I've beaten Bruce Granick once before back in FIFA 15. I've beaten a fair few of the Gfinity guys uh, through Foot Champs on my road to glory. I've beaten the German number one player. I, I don't. I think his name Boost Tank. I think his name was. Uh, I beat him on the road to glory just a few weeks ago. Um, I beat uh, Phil SKS, another Gfinity top 100 uh, player. So I've taken some names, right? But when you get to the level of Gorilla, and I haven't played uh, Tass. I played Tass actually and, and lost to him like probably about six or seven weeks ago in, in uh, the Road to Glory foot champs. But when you get to the level of these these pros that can go 40 and 0, the discrepancy between them to me is just huge. It makes me feel like such a pauper. It's, it's crazy because I know a lot of you guys look to this series and look to me on, on ways to get better at FIFA and ways to like grow your FIFA Ultimate Team, right? I understand that. Um, and I understand I have a lot of like, like a lot to give, and I also understand that the application of knowledge doesn't necessarily suggest ability. And I mean that in the sense that, and I've I've spoken about this before. I know how to do the things. My hand-eye coordination and my reactions aren't good enough to do the things. Like I know I know what skill moves work. I know how the OP things work. I know how the game mechanics work. I know pretty much everything about this game. It's my life, you know, it's my livelihood, it's my job, it's my passion. I know everything there is to know. And if I don't know something that there is to know, I will find out pretty damn quick what it is, how to do it, and how to implement it. But me actually then turning that into being able to do it is an entirely different thing. And I try I try to explain this in the same sense of managers in real world football. You know, a manager knows how to tactically get the best out of his team. That doesn't mean he is necessarily a phenomenal football player. You know, that, that's kind of how, how it works in, in this scenario. But just playing just these two games against Gorilla, I learned some very, very important lessons. Yep, yeah, I got dicked both games. 4-1 and 5-1 could easily have been 10-1 and 15-1. And the first game, um, he like honestly, I think my De Gea made 18 saves. His finishing was horrendous, otherwise it would have been double figures for goals. But he, he did a few things in the games that um, I, I, I'm, I'm not prepared for. And the reason why that is, is because when I do play weekend league, I, I seldom come up against true pros, right? I came up against a lot of Gfinity players or a lot of top 100 players, a lot of good, you know, I come up against a lot of competitive players, but it's, it's not often that I come up against an actual pro player in foot champs. I, I actually think the German guy that I beat and uh, Tass are the only two out and out pros that get paid to be on an esports team. I think they're the only. Oh no, I've come up against a few of the um, a few other dudes as well. I have come up against a few of the uh, the pro players, but not many. In my whole time of foot champs, I think I've only come up against around six or seven actual paid professional FIFA players, not competitive players. Like the difference, uh, I think. Let's explain the difference. The difference is a pro player is a player that is signed to an esports team and is paid a salary to just be a player. A competitive player is a guy who plays in tournaments to try and win prizes, right? So I've played and beat quite a few competitive dudes. Um, and I've played and beat a couple of pros, but I take big losses to pros. The biggest problem with me, and, and I think one of the reasons why I don't necessarily perform as well as I can do every week, and why someone like potentially Bates and does do, is because... I don't play against pros. So when I played against, uh, you know, Huge Gorilla there, I, I don't experience the sort of things that he does 
because I never come up against it. Yet he would experience that on a game to game basis because that's how the pros play against each other. They use all the little quirks and tricks in the book to try and get every advantage they can. And when I play in weekend league, you know, half of my games are against people who aren't very good. A quarter of my games are against people who are good that we have good games. And then a quarter of my games are against people who are very good. But if I don't play against the people that are at that pro level or that high competitive level, I'm never going to be able to experience the things that they do to learn how to do them, but more importantly, how to uh, counter them. Because as I say, Gorilla did a few things in those games where he did... I I'll, show, I'll show when I do it in, in games as well, because I literally implemented it into my gameplay instantly, and I felt like it made me a better player instantly, right? So, like, just literally getting dicked two times taught me so much... Um, that I feel like now I'm going to come become a better player for it. So what I wanted to do with that was basically go and play more competitive or more professional players throughout the next few weeks to try and really up my game. And what I'll be doing with that, and I actually talked about it in a, in a previous video, what I'll be doing with that is I'll be taking on people like uh, IGF Sturridge again, like uh, uh, Giggsy. Um, I might try and see if I can get a game against uh, Tass or against... Um, against uh, uh, who are we thinking of? We're thinking of um, hashtag Harry. That's who I'm thinking of. I'd love to play against these people just to so I can pick up what they're doing that's effective against me because I, I feel like I'm a good player and if they're able to pick me apart to the point where they make me look like I'm the AI on beginner, I've got things that I can learn, that I can build on, that I can improve for me and then maybe we can take those 32 or 30, you know, 30 to 32 win weeks of foot champs to 34 to 36 win weeks of foot champs just by learning the extra things. After I played the Gorilla guys, uh, David Myler lost to, um, I think, Poacher in the first round. Maybe, I, I can't remember who David Myler played, but he wanted to play against me uh, in a best of three afterwards as well. I ended up narrowly winning the first game 4-3 and a couple of my goals were really bad. Like, obviously, I can't I can't not not score them. Like, I took the shot, it went in. It's, it's, not, you know, it's not my fault the goalkeeper AI messes up. But um, yeah, a couple of my goals in that first game were really bad. So we went into the second game in, in a best of three. He was streaming it. Uh, we was, you know, essentially playing for fun. But it is nice to play uh, really strong competitive games against people who just like playing FIFA. And the reason why I say that is because in any normal instance, somebody as good as this in foot champs that came up against, per se, me or Gorilla or Bateson or Marshall or somebody that they knew was like a strong player they would purposely play a different game just to try and frustrate them and, and edge them out. But it's fun playing against someone like Gorilla or someone like David Myler because they're really good FIFA players, but they want to play FIFA. They don't want to play anti-FIFA. They're not interested in passing it around their defense or holding the ball with their goalkeeper to burn a few in-game minutes. They just want to play the game. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want to get better. And that experience for me makes me a better player and hopefully brings you guys some uh, interesting content to watch. So I did end up winning both games against David Myler. I, I, I was fortunate in both games. You know, he had some chances. De Gea again, De Gea for me is just amazing. Uh, I'm very, very glad I've got De Gea in net because he made some unbelievable saves throughout, not just the two games against uh, David Myler, but also against the two games against Huge Gorilla. As I said, it was 4-1 and 5-1 in the two games against Gorilla. It could easily have been 10-1 and 15-1. And like, it, it, I, was, I was getting embarrassed. I was absolutely getting embarrassed in the games. If you want to see more of them, if you want to see like the, the, the more like fuller highlights, I've, I've uploaded it on my main channel. Maybe might, might not be there until tomorrow, but they will be going up onto my main channel. But um, we end up picking up a couple of wins against David Myler, which I was happy with because he's a solid player and his team is exceptional. Um, so yeah, very happy, uh, happy to do that. On the screen now, guys, we've got the marquee matchups. I really love what EA have done with the marquee matchups. When they first started releasing them, it was really difficult and expensive to complete them. I remember one of them was for a draft token, and to get to be able to get the draft token, which obviously has a value of fifteen thousand coins, one player at least, sometimes two players, were worth max bin at ten thousand. So you'd have to pay twenty thousand coins to get a fifteen thousand coin draft token that you could have just bought yourself. Um, I think EA have done a good job with changing the specifications to the point where it doesn't change the market too much, but it gives everyone a good option. If you've stored players to make profit from marquee matchups or squad builder challenges, these players, they go above their market value, you're able to sell on for a profit. They don't go too, too much to the point where you can't afford to buy them though. So if you want to complete the marquee matchups, 
you can do it for a relatively decent price and you get some good packs for it. However, if you're the sort of person that bronze pack methods and stores cards and just stores your, your pack pools and your players anyway, you essentially get these packs, not for free, um, but you get these packs for a really, really low value. So, you know, when, like, you know, we bashed EA a lot recently for not giving back to the community. It's almost like the marquee matchups are EA giving back to the community, especially if you're clever with the game because you can do it for next to nothing, which I think is pretty damn awesome. Um, I haven't been uh, particularly lucky with my uh, with my rewards in packs recently. Obviously, we opened the, uh, the inform, the ultimate, the premium inform pack yesterday uh, or in yesterday's video and I got super unlucky. I got a few 83 rated informs. None of them have any value. The only inform that I got of value is out of the 100k pack, which was Montoya. Um, I've held on to them for now. I, I don't know if I'm just, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Like obviously with no foot champs this weekend, that's potentially 50 to 100,000 coins I've missed out on. A couple of 100,000 K, 100,000 coin packs I've missed out on. Potentially another team of the week pack I've missed out on. But what that could mean could be positive because that premium team of the week pack that still sat there, those three informs, I'm going to save that until Wednesday at 6 p.m. I'm going to open it Wednesday at 6 p.m. no matter who's in the team of the week this time. Reason being, because there are no weekend league rewards, this team of the week is going to be scarcely pulled, which means even the, the average low rated informs will be rarer than normal, giving them more value. So hopefully I can get quite lucky and, and pull a big player, maybe try and sell them on, get some good profit and uh, pick up that blue Sergio Ramos, which is the next player we're going in for. But who knows, you know, I might get unlucky. But anyway, guys, on to some comments from you lot. The first one is from Pablo Chocobar and he says, long comment alert. And it is a long comment and it's a bit of a... Bit of, it's, it's a long comment to say not a lot, I'll say that, but it's got a lot of thumbs up, so I guess a lot of people agree with what he's saying and the sentiment he's getting across. Um, he basically says, in, in a nutshell, and, and I won't read it, Pablo Chocobar, I won't read your comment because I feel like I could relay a better message a bit quicker than what you've written there. In a nutshell, what he says is he would like an option like draft, where you pay 15k to enter, but instead of drafting a team, you get to pick whatever team you want, and the rewards you get are untradeable instead of tradable. And the reason why he wants this um, is because he, like, if that new 91 Hazard comes out, for example, and he has enough to buy him, but he doesn't want to necessarily buy him and have him be garbage and then lose you know, instantly tax and then potentially depreciation as well. He wants to be able to try that Hazard in the team that he might be using anyway. So if he could pay 15k to enter into a tournament, where you know you get to pick whatever team you want and then you get an untradeable reward at the end uh, that's that's kind of what he wants uh, he did mention about the the reward being like an untradeable 100k pack and saying it doesn't affect the market and there's been some debate on whether or not untradeable rewards affect the market and and I kind of see the point because people say like let's say you win an untradeable 100k pack and you pack Ronaldo it's unlikely but let's assume it's true there is now a Ronaldo that you won't be buying off the market, meaning there's an extra Ronaldo on the market changing the supply and demand. So I do see how untradeable packs do actually affect the market. I just don't think they affect the market because you're not flooding players. Um, you, you know, like in my club personally, I have so many untradeable players just sat there doing nothing. Uh, I think Nick is the same. He has a lot of untradeable players just sat there doing nothing. That If I got like an untradeable... Um, an untradeable, let's say Chris Smalling, let's say I packed an untradeable Chris Smalling, yeah, I'd go ahead and sell my Chris Smalling, um, but it wouldn't it wouldn't change the market to, to an end where it ruins things, in my opinion, especially with squad builder challenges, which completely remove cards from the market. Um, I, I, think, I think in general it would be pretty fun to have something like that, something where you can pay money to just build a team and play with it for three or four games, right? Um, but I don't think it's anything EA will ever put into the game. Uh, like, it, it is a nice idea, I just don't think they will. Now, this game here, this was the first game I played after playing David Milo and Huge Gorilla, and um, I took a, took a loss. It was really frustrating because the opponent, he hit a long shot um, early on in the game and hit a rebound off of that, so that's two of his four shots, and he just passed it around the defence for the rest of the game until the half-time mark, mark came, and then he had one attack, and because I was losing patience, I was, I was getting agitated, he ended up scoring off of that attack. Um, so he went 2-0 up at half-time, and then for the rest of the game again, he just passed it around the back line again. And he messaged me afterwards saying, good game, well played. And I, 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 I find it hard to accept that 
he actually thought that was a good game. Whether he knew me or not, if, if that's how he plays or not, because Division 1 is sweaty, people want to win, I understand that, I understand people want to do everything in their power to, to, get, the, to get the wins right, but I, I don't, like going back to what I was saying about when I play Gorilla, when I play David Myler, they want to play FIFA, they want to have fun, they want to score goals and do good things. They don't want to just get a goal from a lucky long, long shot rebound and then dead the game and, and kill it. And, and I get that, oh, that happens in real world football all the time, but this isn't real world football, this is a video game. Like the primary objective is to have fun, right? And there is a point in time where FIFA is not fun. Um, and I'm not saying that like, I've never done anything to frustrate people before. I know, I know what you're probably thinking, like, oh, you, you know, you dab and you shush and you do overzealous celebrations and, you know, like uh, you sweat it and you use broken game mechanics to your advantage. I get that. Um, and, and I understand, as I say, I understand why people want to do things that they do to win. But I just, I don't see the purpose in playing FIFA. Like, if, if you want to play to that end just go play online singles and have fun play against people that aren't going to give you a tough game if you know when i when i can't be bothered to play stressful fifa i go into the daily knockouts because they're just typically not as 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 competitive as division one or as foot champs perfect right so i go into that and i try and play it and try and have fun when i go into division one i go into division one with the idea of trying to win but i won't like get rid of my morals within FIFA to win. Does that make sense? Um, I know I know it sounds hypocritical because what I'm saying is, for me, for what I do, that's okay because it works for me, but what he did isn't okay because it worked for him. I know what that sounds like, right? But my whole point is, hopefully uh, my point is coming across well, my whole point is he literally hit a lucky long shot that turned into a rebound for a goal and then passed the ball for the rest of the game. There's no, like, that, that, that wasn't a true reflection of his skill or my skill. That wasn't a true reflection of how the game actually played out. Because if he didn't hit that long shot, if it hit the bar and went out instead of hit the bar and coming back in and him getting the rebound, it would have been a completely different game. I may well still have lost the game. There's no two ways about that. He might have just been a really good player anyway and, and managed to beat me. But it was just really frustrating and really boring to play, to play that game. So when people message me good game after a game that they have purposely tried to dull out and make boring, I, I refused to accept that it was actually a good game. It was a very bad game. I'm sure you guys have experienced bad games yourself. And it's, I, I'm not like angry or upset because I lost. Like a loss means nothing to me. You know, th this is a Road to Glory account. Our, our record speaks for itself, specifically in divisions, especially when I've been relegated from Division 1 twice already. I've tried new teams in divisions. Uh, you know, I try a lot of new things in Division 1. That's kind of where I try and practice to, to get my, my, my sharpness for the weekend league. And what I've done this time around is I put Ibrahimovic at striker because uh, I want to see how he plays in competitive uh, game. And, and that, that, again, goes back to the point where... I want, to, I want to learn how my players work so that I can play with them, right? So I want, to, I want to play with Ibra. I want to see how he feels as a striker. I want to see how his shooting is, how his pace is, how his strength is compared to defenders. And then I play against a guy who passes it around the defence for 80 minutes. I don't get to see anything about how Ibra works because I haven't got the ball to him. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 and again, I know it sounds just super hypocritical. You're like, oh my God, he just beat you, get over it, learn to take a loss. I, I can accept losses when, when I'm beaten by a better player, as you know, showed way back at the start of this video against Huge Gorilla. He's just too good for me. I learned some things from playing him. I, I like to learn from people that are better than me so that I become a better player. The guy that beat me, I don't know if he was a better player than me or not, because we didn't play a game of FIFA. We played a game of me trying to chase the ball around his back line. That, that, I, I didn't learn anything from that, and he didn't learn anything from that. So ultimately, it was just a waste of both people's time, which is why I'd say that, which is why that sort of stuff frustrates me more than most, um, if that makes sense. But anyway, anyway, moving swiftly on. We won the next game. We're already in the lead in this game. Very happy days. Uh, Ruben Gallup says, if you, bring an, if you could bring one ex-footballer who isn't already a legend into FIFA, who would it be and why? It would be for me, dude, Thierry Henry, because he is my favourite FIFA player, my favourite football player of all time. Linda says, Hey Nep, what do you think will happen with the Top 100 Weekly Ultimate Team of the Week set during a time where major leagues don't play and there are no more than five gold informs? Because you need at least 11 for the Ultimate Team of the Week set and monthly reward. Please reply and share your opinion on that. Love from Germany. Because of how much upgrades EA are giving to players, it wouldn't surprise me if, the, if they made it 11 informs minimum each week. Um, you know, there are always leagues where 
a silver player who's 73 rated could get an inform and they could just make him 80 rated. You know, I, I, that's, that's, that's my opinion. I personally believe that what they will do is... Um, is just make sure that there are at least 11 informs in, a pa in, in the team of the week each week. Saying that though, if there was like 11 really garbage informs in, uh, in the team of the week, I would just hold on to my pack until there was a better team of the week. Um, and, and, you know, when the major leagues close up, that's typically like towards the back end of the game, you know? Team of the season comes out, um, you, you, you basically get to a point where there's just not much left. The, you know the seasons are closed. Maybe foot champs will be finished by then. Maybe you know maybe maybe they're finishing foot champs a couple months early. I don't you know I don't know I don't know the uh, how foot champs is going to work. I don't know what EA are doing with it. I don't know what they plan for it. Uh, I don't know you know a lot of people thought January was going to be a month off. Um, you know they might end up finish like with the close of the real seasons. They might close foot champs as well. Um, we we just don't know you know. So uh, be interesting to see. Uh, what happens with that in the in the near future? Unnamed user says, "Am I the only one that believes fitness on players goes down too quick? If I were to update my team every other game with bronze squad fitness cards that go for one k, I'd be earning that from matches. So I'm ultimately making nothing from playing the game. Quite ridiculous, to be honest." Yeah, I do agree. Um, you know, fitness, especially on some players, like like players with high high work rates, can lose up to potentially ten fitness per game at times. It's just just like they don't like. I, again, it's it's difficult. Like. Because there are two things. Number one, this game, because it is uh, an equivalent of a real world thing, gets compared to the real world a lot. But this game is not the real world, right? In the real world, players can play for games on games on games, for weeks on weeks on weeks, without getting tired until eventually they potentially need a rest or they get injuries because of lack of rest and, and so on and so forth. Um, however, in the real world, they don't play nine games in a day you know so um i i do think that and that, that's why in yesterday's video I, I spoke about um sbc's for fitness because you know a lot of people are putting a lot of time into this game and uh, you can literally only play like one sometimes two games before you have to either change your team or apply fitness cards which are ex just stupidly expensive they are very very expensive I understand why EA do it. It's a pack filler. It's part of the market. Yada yada yada. You know, if you want to want to work on fitness, there are things you could do. You can play offline games to get fitness back with bronze teams. You can do bronze pack method. You can use your your earnings from all the things that go on to buy um, to buy fitness cards. You can have a second squad to rotate. There's so much you can do. You know, um, but I do think that the price of fitness cards is just a little bit expensive. It is just or. or or rather than that, the amount of fitness required is a little bit too high. Um, I, I think it might be a lot more prudent if instead of, you know, if they just halved the way fitness works so that it would require three or four games before using a fitness card, you know, five or six if you really wanted to stretch it out, rather than one or two or three if you wanted to stretch it out. Uh, I think that would be, uh, you know, a much, much better scenario for sure. Uh, CJ plays game said, "Hey Nep, I tried the loyalty glitch and it didn't work. Could you please revisit how to do it? Uh, love your vids. Keep up the daily content. Best YouTube around. Well, I appreciate the kind words, dude. And I actually did the loyalty glitch for this on screen right here last night, and it works perfectly well. Um, so I don't know how it failed for you. One, the one thing I will say, which is what I think a lot of people miss out on, is when you get into the game against the the AI, you have to kick the game off. They like either you or they have to kick the game off. If you disconnect before the game kicks off, it doesn't count as a game because the game didn't kick off. Um, so uh, just make sure you uh, you kick the game off. Jack Webster says, "Hey man, when you said you made 230k on bronze packs, how much did you spend on bronze packs? Because I have 100k and I want to know if it will get me a lot of profit." Cheers, man. I don't know how much I've spent on bronze packs, dude. And I, I made 230k in that instance. I've made hundreds of thousands in prior instances. Um, it would be really interesting if if there was a count like a counter for how many packs you opened because I have most likely spent millions of coins on bronze packs over the course of this series. Uh, you know, I open a lot of bronze packs. Only takes what is it? Ten bronze packs is four thousand. A hundred bronze packs is forty thousand. Um, so a thousand bronze packs is four hundred thousand. I've definitely opened thousands of bronze packs, so I have definitely opened millions of coins worth of bronze packs. Um, if you've got 100k, just go and open 50k's worth of bronze packs. Store all the items to the club. Sell any players that sell. Sell fitness cards when they're at their highest value during the weekend league for 14, 1500 coins. Pro you know, problem solved. Like the thing with the bronze pack method is, it's not instant profit. Um, 
it is uh, it is more about long term profit. You know, as I say, a lot of the players that I sold a few episodes ago when I made 230, 240,000 coins just like that were players that I might have packed months ago that have just been sat in the club that wouldn't have sold for more than 150 to 200 coins that all of a sudden were selling for five to 600 coins. That's where I want to sell them. You just got to sell them when they're relevant and make sure you make the, the best out of it. Facundo Bellon says, Hi Nip, what do you mean when they say abuse game mechanics? So there are a lot of things in this game, dude, that are broken. Um, you know, lo like low driven shots are broken, left trigger, right trigger uh, is broken, like the skill dribble, the sprint boost, the left bumper sprint boost is a broken game mechanic. So there's a lot of things in this game that are just overpowered to the point where they shouldn't be. And of course, like in any game, you want to do things to best benefit you. Um, and when you when you relate that to other games, I, I would say like in Call of Duty, you know that if you hit a noob tube from the start on one of the maps across the map, if the person hasn't moved from spawn in time, it will kill them. That's something that's broken. It's just a little bit too overpowered. It's a little bit stronger than how the game should be. And there's a lot of things in FIFA that are like that. Of course, FIFA is a game that has just millions of different um, inputs and outputs at all times. You know, when you pass the ball, how every AI player on the game reacts to that is is like done by uh, like micro. Um, can't remember the exact word, but basically it just happen mi micro decisions a thousand times per second. Um, so there are certain things in the game that the game can't just. Basically, the game's just broken in certain areas. Uh, we got a really good pack there, by the way, Kante, and we got Tony Kroos in the previous pack. But yeah, uh, with with broken game mechanics, there are basically just certain things within the game that are way, way too strong um, that uh, really aid you in your game and help you win games against good people, against bad people, against people that are worse than you, and against people that are better than you. But anyway, guys, I completed the um, the SBCs there, as you saw. We end up getting a walkout in the first pack, in the 50k pack. Tony Kroos, a nice amount of coins back in the bag. And we end up getting uh, Kante in the next one, which is very nice indeed as well. But this is going to be the end of the video for today. So if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.